Thank you, Cheryl. I'd uh, like to also say thank you to Senator Bond and Congresswoman Emerson for your help. And the ports are one of the one of the really bright spots in the economy that we have. And uh, we have David Madison comes to Jefferson City a lot, and it's it's one of the most important things we have. And to partner with MoDOT, and I, I must say that when I when I first ran for office in 03, the the biggest complaint that I got was on the roads. And there has been such a tremendous improvement in our highways and our roads. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mickey, for all the work that you've done. And, and to be able to make this connection and be able to, to help this port because it's one of the bright spots in a, in a weak economy, but it's, it's one of the things that really helps us. And appreciate uh, all of you, Colonel Southern, Dwayne, everybody that has worked on this and glad to see this day happen. Thank you, Representative Swinger. Um, our next speaker uh, is kind of near and dear to our heart here in southeast Missouri, uh, and the ports are near and dear to his. I, I met Commissioner Mickey several years ago before I ever returned back to southeast Missouri, and he talked to me a lot about ports all along the way and how critical they were to our infrastructure. So it seems very fitting that he has uh, come to help us out today to celebrate this link between our intermodals of the river, the port, and our highway. So, Commissioner Mickey. Thank you. Senator, thank you so much. And Joanne and uh, Terry and Rob Mayer, you mentioned earlier about the, everybody coordinating and working together and the partnerships and how it happens. I mean, these projects happen because there is a united effort to bring them together. And it's so important that this takes place. I remember so clearly when I first came on the uh, Port Authority Board uh, with Colonel Southern as our chairman, I remember so clearly that the port authorities were established while you were the governor, and you signed into law the authority to do so, and none of us really had an idea or a real grasp of what the real importance of all of this. And every time... You did. I thought you, I thought you guys knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the interesting part about all of it is every time we have a, a study completed by the Corps to look at cost-benefit analysis with ports versus any other modes of transportation. And we're doing about a half million ton of freight in and out at this port. And when we measure that, or when the Corps measures that and does with a, with a freight analysis that they, they, they complete, there's about a six million dollar savings in freight costs at a, on a half million ton of freight. Now that gives you some idea of the volume of freight that's being moved, but also the cost and efficiency by movement of the river. People don't understand that. The town, folk, folks across the country do not understand that. But those of us who are in business and those who are moving freight, whether it's any of the grain elevators or anyone else that's moving major freight, they know that. They understand that. And to have this opportunity is just unbelievable. And this connection, this is our final connection with bringing the rail to the river, not exactly where we want it yet, but there's another step. With, the, with a direct line, with a great highway system, all this coming together is absolutely perfect. I'll tell you one little brief story. Over the years, we've had a number of exchange students that have come into our area through the Rotary Exchange. And I guess I've brought seven or eight, ten groups, eight or, eight or ten folks out here. And I always bring them to this location at this site. This is the most perfect site that you could have had this year. This is, this is the ideal thing. Because when you bring someone from Mexico or Sweden or any other country in the world who comes to take a look at this, and you show them that river, and you show them that interstate highway system, and you hear that train in the background, you can really clear a message as to why what we are doing in the United States works perfectly because of the infrastructure that's there. And I have never had a group, whether a group from India or anyone else, they're always, they always come here with this notion of, why are you folks so successful? What are you doing in the United States that makes it so successful? And when they see this, when they come to this point, and you have the explanation about this is what it takes to make it happen, they clearly have a fixation of this is what it happens. This, this is what takes place. Thank you so much, and it's so good to be here. And Clyde, I, uh, 
uh, he's been such a great resource to us as you can as you, as you all can imagine. We've got Earl Billing, Billington who's been with the board for years. We have Ron, we have uh, Byron Medlin who's also serving on the board. board and I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. But thank you so much. We appreciate that. Great. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Thanks for having us. I bet we will. All right, well, I'll look for money. <laughs> May have left the commission, but he has not left transportation. That's for darn sure. Um, I know, and so I've, I've known him for you know, about ten years now. So I'm, I've been very fortunate in that. Um, and our last speaker for the day uh, is uh, Colonel Southern from the Port Authority, and um, he's going to say a few words as well. Uh, I'm lucky to have you to rank these days, folks. I'm just a historian. My daughter always said she had more respect for Colonel Sanders than you did me. <laughs> she had a lot. Folks, look at this beautiful levee. We've got three quarters of a mile here for this port. It was nothing but a mud flat. That's what he was. And uh, I want to give credit to the first man who pushed for this was presiding judge D.J. Meredith here in this county. He worked on it in 1970. And we had another man who ultimately came as our director from Washington, Marine Corps, Colonel Stevens, Tom Stevens, who had fought in three wars. By the way, uh, DJ was a B-17 pilot in World War II. These were all great people. They're departed and gone. But anyway, we remember them well, and uh, they would be happy to see this event today. Now, uh, we saw the Cajun dredge boat come up here in Louisiana. He pumped the first boat load out of that plant, place in the river right over yonder. We thought it was all beautiful white sand. When he started pumping, though, we looked, and DJ said, my God, he says, that ain't nothing but chicken dung. <laughs> it looks like it and smells like it. <laughs> well, I could use the other word. You know, I thought I got to give credit to a Democrat here. If Harry Truman were here, he'd have another word for it, wouldn't he? He'd cut it like it was. Well, sure enough, we did get some sand later on. If you look at it, you'll see some good sand. We pumped it in here, and it's been very good. And our good friend, Senator Jack Danforth, once said, he says, you know, this is the greatest thing I ever saw. You're, 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 you're taking sand out of a blocked river. It needs to be keep the navigation open. And you're putting an old garbage dump up here. That's the greatest thing I ever saw. He was right. However, the environmentalists stopped us, folks, not too far down the road. Said, well, you're in a seismic zone. You can't do that. Well, we're still in a seismic zone, and we're doing a lot. So anyway... I want to tell you that the first real thing we got from the legislature was in 1974. Young Kit Vaughn, who was the governor of Missouri, by the way, he was the youngest governor in the U.S. of A. at the time. He signed the first port bill, and we got a grant shortly thereafter. In 1980, we got the Corps to spend $900,000, which was cheap, folks, according to today, all paid for by them. It has worked. It has worked ever since. And I thank goodness for all the people here that supported us. And also Bill Emerson and Joanne Emerson. They worked every day in every way. One time Bill Emerson says, Now, Clyde, don't you be disappointed when we put a rail in the new Madrid report and, and, and it came to drive him. He says, I ain't forgot you. You're going to get it. <laughs> he did, but it was under Joanne Emerson. Okay? <laughs> I thank you very much, and I appreciate the opportunity.